Hello, so welcome to the fifth uh, screencast of a PowerPoint for Introduction to Poetry and Great Poets. This is the third one on uh, lyric uh, forms. And I know I've gone grievously uh, over time on every presentation so far. This one, I think I might be able to get within 10 minutes. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so let's start with the slideshow. Here we go. Um, okay, and we'll just play from the start. We're going to skip the first two slides. These are the ones we've seen before. Okay, and we're just going to review what we've done so far. Okay, uh, first of all, I got to ask for your forgiveness that these are pretty rough. As you know, I had to invent this whole course as we went along this summer. And um, and uh, these are very unpracticed, unpolished uh, screencasts. Okay, so occasionally I forget things. For example, I wanted to talk about uh, Petrarch's muse for the sonnet. We were talking about how the sonnet was created by Pet Petrarch um, as a love song. And one of the questions on the quiz, which may very well be on the final, is who was Petrarch's famous muse? And Petrarch's muse was Laura. So the name Laura since then has been a sort of uh, name for a poet's muse. Okay, so we talked about the ballad, the ode, the sonnet, and what we're going to do today, uh, or in this particular talk, is uh, discuss some of the other short lyric forms, okay? And I think we can do it quickly. All right, one that's very cool uh, that we have a lot, a fair amount of in English, but it doesn't seem to be so common in Russian, is called a villanelle. Okay, um, I, you can read it right here, but basically it is one of these forms that come mainly from oral tradition, so pre or semi-literate French troubadours, um, so it's closer to a ballad than it is to a sonnet or ode. Um, I could read the description of a villanelle, but I think it's just going to be easier as long as I have everything right here uh, to actually just show you what it is. And we're also going to talk about the Sistina. The Sistina is a pattern poem based on repeating words rather than repeating verses. It was also invented from oral tradition, but it's more literary form. Okay, so let's just show you how this works. I think we can do this one quickly. Uh, the most famous villanelle in English is called Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. And as you can see, the way that a villanelle works is it, it's a very set pattern. It, it, ha it works with a series of tercets uh, and one quatrain at the end. So the first tercet has to rhyme A, B, A, and then you construct the subsequent ones by repeating the first A, and the second A uh, through the middle of the poem twice. Okay, so you can see the pattern here. You don't really have to memorize this just to know that it's based on repeating verses from the first tercet. And then in the final part of the poem, you have what they call the envoy, which is a quatrain. And in this quatrain, you have to use uh, all uh, both of the previous repeated verses and uh, an AB rhyme. So it rhymes A, B, A1, A3. Okay, this is what uh, it looks like. Uh, it is kind of hard to explain, but when you listen to it, you can hear it has a very beautiful musical sound to it. The one I think everybody enjoyed a lot was Mad Girl's Love Song, which is one by Sylvia Plath. Okay, and it's exactly the same uh, form as Dylan Thomas. It's basically a song form, okay, and uh, but it's uh, so it's a lyric, okay, and it's just a cool example of a lyric. Uh, another one that we looked at just as a cool example, Sestina, but Sestina is not based on repeating verses, but rather on repeating ver words. So each line ends with a word, and then the words have to be repeated in a certain pattern. And again, I could get into all the description of the pattern, but uh, I think it's easier just to show you basically how it works. In the envoy, which is not a, a sestet as in the previous ones, but which is a tercet, you have to use all of the six words. Okay, so both of these are pattern poems. Once you understand the pattern, you know how to make the poem. Villanelles are actually pretty easy to make, and I, I would strongly encourage people to give it a try to make a villanelle. Sestinas are a lot harder, um, but it's worth giving it a try as well. And when it works well, it's usually a pretty spectacular poem. Okay, so those are just two examples of cool lyric forms. Okay, and then we're just going to look really quickly at, at some other ones. I actually skipped a few that I could have talked about. Maybe I'll mention them real quickly. Uh, one very common form of lyric poem is what we call the epigram. 
So an epigram is a really short, witty, or aphoristic poem, uh, and it really comes just from the Greek word that means inscription. Notice that almost all our poetic terminology comes in one way or another from the Greeks, um, and it, it designates almost any text short enough to be inscribed on something. So I like to say the best definition of an epigram is it's short enough to make a tattoo from if you wanted to. Uh, but some uh, variations are the epigraph, which is, is uh, inscriptions you see at the beginning of a book, for example, or the epitaph, which you see on a tomb. And these are just variations on epigraphs. Uh, okay, and the limerick, which is a short five-line comic poem with a fixed pattern. Uh, you would definitely uh, recognize the pattern if you hear it. Uh, more easily than if I describe it, but it's something like da 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 seasonal word because because it's always about nature uh, and a kind of volta or turning word cutting word kireji i guess is the japanese word uh, for it okay uh, all right so just some quick examples epigrams are usually either aphoristic in other words they have some kind of philosophical wisdom in them or they're witty they have some kind of witticism so these are just a couple of examples we looked at in class um, here are some Russian epigrams. When we got to the Romantics, I remembered a famous Russian epigram, Prashai the Muta Yarosia. We looked at Putin. I know you guys didn't like that, but that's what we did. Um, so that's, those are examples of epigrams, short uh, poems that are either witty or they have some kind of philosophical wisdom. Uh, one variation on the epigram, popular one, obviously, is the epitaph, which is just a short poem that's engraved on a headstone. These are some of the more famous poetic epitaphs in English, uh, W.B. Yeats and John Keats and uh, Percy Shelley's, uh, which is actually a quote from Shakespeare. And uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, I forgot about him. He has a really pretty one. Home is the sailor home from the sea and the hunter home from the hill. Um, one of the forms that I could have done, but I was pressed for time and I kind of forgot about it, was the elegy. And the elegy is a poem that's written in memory of someone. So it's kind of like an ode. It's also like an ode and being a very literary form with a long tradition in literature. Um, an elegy is a poem that you write, uh, that you read when someone dies, okay, in memory of someone. Um, but you can also call uh, some, any poem that has a kind of reflective, sad content, you can call elegiac or, or, or a kind of elegy. Um, okay, then we looked at the limerick. Okay, um, these are just some examples. And most people kind of are already familiar with limericks, but uh, you might not uh, be familiar with the guy who invented the limerick, whose name has just totally flip, flipped out of my head. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause the recording and look up the guy's name. Um, right, his name is Edward Lear. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually knew that, I just forgot. <laughs> okay, I'm supposed to be sharing, uh, am I sharing? Here we go. Okay, yeah, his name is Edward Lear, right? And Edward Lear is the guy who became famous for uh, the limerick. Incidentally, this is not the first time we've seen this, you know, remember when Petrarch made the sonnet famous with his book of sonnets, and Edward Lear made the limerick famous with his uh, book of limericks, okay? So it's actually an interesting case where one poet actually makes a certain form of poetry popular. Okay, and then last but not least, maybe we could say the same about basho and, uh, and uh, haiku, I'm not quite sure, but haiku is another great example of that, and we just touched briefly on it. Okay, that's basically all I did, just to cover a few last versions of the lyric form.